start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our uh, webinar today, which is all about 3D printing or additive manufacturing innovation in uh, packaging. This is a joint webinar by Stratasys and our partner in, uh, in Australia and New Zealand, uh, TCL. My name is uh, Shiri Sar. I'm uh, the Director of Customer Advocacy for Stratasys in South Asia, based in Hong Kong. I've been with the company now for uh, about uh, nine years. And I'm happy to uh, uh, talk to you today about additive manufacturing, both in design and in uh, manufacturing, in the world of, uh, of packaging. We are uh, joined or hosted today by our uh, partner in Australia, as I mentioned, TCL Hoffman and TCL Hunt in Australia and, uh, and uh, New Zealand, which I'm sure that most, in, if not all, of the people on the light right now are familiar with. And we have online with us uh, John Winnan from TCL. I've personally known uh, John for a long time, and he's been in the 3D printing industry for uh, many years now. John, would you like to say hello? Yes, thanks, Shiri, um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining our webinar on 3D printing innovation in packaging. Um, as Shiri identified, and as you can see on the screen, my name's John Winnan. I'm the Business Manager for 3D Printing and Additive Manufacturing at TCO Hoffman. Uh, a little about myself, uh, I have seven and a half years experience in 3D printing and working with Stratasys, uh, and prior to that, a design and manufacturing software and I'm a qualified CNC machinist. Um, so TCL Hoffman and TCL Hunt are excited to be representing Stratasys in Australia and New Zealand um, and have the opportunity to extend our offering to industry uh, and including the packaging industry. Um, we've made many significant investments in training our team to be accredited by Stratasys and in establishing our 3D printing demo centre at our Melbourne headquarters with several Stratasys uh, 3D printers, including the J850 uh, and Fortis, both of which are highlighted in this presentation and you'll see in the coming slides. Uh, I'd just like to also just take the chance to say thank you to the Australian Institute of Packaging and the Society of Plastic Engineers and associated bodies in promoting this event. Uh, I will be here uh, at the end of Shiri's presentation to help with answering some of your questions uh, and sharing my contact details for further follow-up. Um, so that's all for me from now. I'll hand back to Shiri and allow her to start the presentation. Thank you very much, John. Um, so in the next uh, hour or so, we will uh, go over a lot of content. We'll shortly talk about kind of Stratasys, our company, what we have to offer. The main focus again will be around 3D printing or additive solutions in packaging. By the way, I will use them uh, interchangeably. They mean the, the same thing for the sake of this presentation. We will focus uh, kind of half of the time on design solution, uh, prototyping, uh, uh, marketing and sales uh, aids, things similar to what you see on the screen right now, which is 3D printed by the way. The other uh, half will be around more manufacturing solution, molding application, and kind of a manufacturing floor solution. We will leave time for questions and answer in the end. As John mentioned, he will uh, join me for this session. We also have on the line a, a Mark Chow, our application engineer. We, we'll, uh, he will be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have as well. We will be sharing a recording of this uh, session afterwards, so don't worry about uh, uh, missing any of the slides or any of the of the content whatever we are not either able to cover here or answer it here we will be more than happy to follow with you later so rest assured any question or information that you are, you will need afterwards we will be happy to uh, to provide okay so uh, let's get started so we will have enough time for the q a session and have kind of an opportunity for an open discussion so let's start talking a little bit about uh, Stratasys, about the company. So uh, for those who may think that additive manufacturing is relatively a new thing, Stratasys has been around for over 30 years from the invention of the original uh, FDM technology. We uh, Globally, we have four uh, manufacturing locations. We, op we operate directly in over 13 countries with over 150 resellers in our network. Uh, us and our subsidiary have over 2,000 employees, and we have 
to headquarters, including R&D centers, uh, both in Israel and in the US and in uh, Minnesota. Stratasys is the inventor the, uh, uh, of the original FDM technology or fuse deposition modeling. Uh, for those of you familiar with the technology, this is the uh, thermoplastic uh, 3D printing solution. Our, our technology covers from standard, the ABS, up to the engineering and high-performance thermoplastics, uh, Altem, Antero, uh, nylon uh, uh, carbon fiber. This is about strong, durable, repeating, uh, repeated parts, so you can get the same exact part every time uh, out of the printer, which is critical, especially, and we'll talk about it, in the world of manufacturing. So if you need that exam, for, for example, the part that you see here, which was 3D printed out of nylon carbon fiber, if you need this exact part multiple times, you need to ensure that the part coming out of the printer is exactly the same as the part that you printed before and that you designed. The other technology that is part of our product line is the polyjet technology. This is a jetting uh, technology starting from a liquid polymer that is cured by UV light. Here we are talking about uh, aesthetics. We are talking about the ability to print with multiple materials, have more than 500,000 distinct colors due to our ability to, to combine and print parts using multiple materials. This allowed us to get to different colors, shades, opaque and transparent models uh, using rubber-like materials and rigid materials in the same uh, part, getting different shore levels. Everything that you currently see on the screen, everything was 3D printed using our J-Series technology. Everything down to the user manual that looks like it's paper, it's plastic and was printed. And the idea is to use these parts and to use these models to allow for internal communication whether it is in the same room with other designers in different locations with management and with end users. So you can be sitting in Hong Kong and printing this uh, entire packaging, and you can be sitting in Australia, and you can be uh, sitting in the UK, and you will all be printing this kind of package and have the same discussion right, about the product. Now, moving forward, you will see a lot of models on the screen. I kind of challenge you throughout this uh, session to uh, try to guess or evaluate whether this is a real part or a 3D printed part. And if we're talking about polyjet, let's talk about the kind of the first half of the presentation that I mentioned, which is around the world of design. How do designer works? What is important? Why is the, uh, the design part, including the product packaging itself, uh, so important? It's not a, a niche market, it's not a decoration, it's actually a very, very integral part of the user experience. And companies are putting more and more uh, efforts into optimizing this and making sure that you have the right design for the product and the right packaging. What you see on the screen, by the way, the perfume bottle, 3D printed, this came out, other than the, the cap that he's holding, the entire thing came out as one part printed out of our printer. The cap was printed next to it, okay? When we're talking about design, we, uh, we talk about what we call CMF, which is color, material, and finish. Designer invests a lot of work in designing the best and most accurate, what we call the CMF. They understand the value that it brings to the whole product design, and it's not a trivial process. The way that a product looks, the way that a product feels is critical for the, uh, uh, for the end use part. Um, it's critical in advertisement, right? Because it signifies kind of the quality of the whole product and of the brand, okay? Um, this is why, for example, what you see now is Apple chose to focus on the strap on the new Apple Watch that it shows, it, it communicates or it translates into a product quality, right? The same as the kind of being part of the buying decision. One of the first things that people do when they're checking a new uh, product, even unconsciously, you, can, you touch it, right? You consciously evaluate the CMF, the color material and finish quality of the part. The product surface is part of a, kind of their buying decision or their experience uh, with their uh, product. 
And last is the overall kind of user experience uh, uh, with the product. All of us as users, we want products that look, that feel good, the appearance, the surface balance, the, the, the temperature, the, how it feels when uh, you touch it, it's all defined by the uh, CMF design. If you have the wrong uh, color, if you have low quality of materials, rough texture, something doesn't work, it impacts your experience uh, uh, with the product. And the mission of additive manufacturing in general, but specifically for Polyjet, is to kind of change the way that we work with CMF and bringing from the traditional way that we used to do it into a new way. By the way, what you see here on the screen, the speaker, all 3D printed, the fact that it looks like fabric, that's part of the capability of the technology. So you have a gene-like, you have kind of a general uh, textures and fabrics, and I will show more examples of this uh, moving forward. Again, think about it, you have this part, you can come with a part as a whole to a meeting with different variations. So the idea in additive manufacturing is to be able to take what used to be done kind of traditionally into a, a 3D printing world. From a, the designer perspective, it starts with kind of the TD sketch, goes into a virtual a, a CAD design, and then the rendering is done on the computer, on the CAD. The idea is to take this into the 3D world, helping design the 3D models, okay, and have a full CMF, final design as the, the printed part. And we in Stratasys want to help the designers and walk them through the entire process. From the very initial concept design, okay, very simple part, even, you know, one color bulky parts, into more intricate and uh, uh, detailed design and iteration up to the CMF and final design. And basically move the product design process from this, which is how we to date, we uh, kind of do the post-processing and the coloring and the finishing to this. So if you wanna, want to design, uh, this is an AirPod package, you can start from the left-hand side using what we call our draft gray kind of a bulky one part just to see, to have an idea on how it's going to look, moving into a black and white model. Then you can start using different material to understand how it's going to look on the inside, using clear materials, for example. Then into a, a color model, into full packaging, including functional testing. So kind of taking our designers, taking the product development through the entire cycle using additive manufacturing. And the whole idea is to do it faster. You want to get faster into the market. You want to do more iteration in a shorter uh, amount of time. And you want to have a real final product in your hand to have these discussions. When we're talking about 3D printing, we're talking about uh, cutting 50% of the designer time because now they are able to do iteration much faster. 80% of the modeling time. So now from this, the minute you have to design the design in your hand until now you had to send it out, have it done, uh, get it back, and we can talk about how it was outsourced until now. But cutting 80% the modeling time, 80% of the modeling cost, because you do it now uh, with additive manufacturing, you can bring colors into the process a lot sooner than you would before. So you can have a real understanding of how the product is going to look with the different colors and textures much earlier. You can have a lot more iteration and faster. If you can have a part within hours or overnight, imagine a discussion on model A today, B, C, D, and by the end of the week, you can have, you can run through 20 different uh, model iterations. And in the same amount of time, you can have a lot more models made. Just to give kind of an idea of what we mean when we say that there is a time, uh, time and money saving, I'll give an example of this uh, a car key model. So what you see on the left-hand side is the CAD design, and on the right-hand side is the 3D model part. Before, if we needed to outsource this, this would have taken, taken nine days to get it back and around 480 US dollars to make the part, right? If you needed the one part made externally, now you can have the same part in four hours, and it'll cost you around uh, $67, 
okay, to, to, uh, in materials to have it made in-house. So you can make the decision, a go, no go, a coloring decision, a design decision, hold it in your hand, I like it, I don't like it, and move on, okay? Now, when we are talking about a design, how the product looked, how the product package, product package, and I know that we have on the line many people from uh, the food industry, from the uh, cosmetic industry, you know these pains. It's about uh, choosing the right materials and choosing the right uh, uh, texture and how does the surface feel and what is the transparency level that we want, what do we want to see inside. When it comes to the labeling, it's about the color, the, the font, the size, the position of it, how does the logo look and where do we want it placed. There is a lot of questions around uh, uh, the parts and how we want them uh, to look. And 3D printing helps solve all of this what we call the, the CMF communications issue, to ensure that there is an agreement about how the part is going to look, and there is an agreement across the board internally, externally, and that we all see the same thing. These are all printed parts. So on the left-hand side, you can see a, a lacquer bottle, right, a nail polish bottle. So you can make sure that the color matches exactly what you need, and we'll talk about color matching and Pantone very soon. You can ensure there is the, the right finish and the clear or the transparency level that you want. You can ensure that the logo is the, and the writing is the exact one and in the, the exact place. And moreover, and this is true for the lacquer bottle and this is true for the bottle that you see on the right hand side. You can do a one-time molding of the container and the content inside. So the both the lacquer that was printed inside, right, it looks full plus the bottle on the right-hand side, all of the, the bubbles inside, the balls inside, they were all printed in one go. So you can have an understanding of how it is going to look. The bottle on the right-hand side, by the way, the golden trim and the nozzle and the cap, they were printed separately. And we did some post-processing on it so it will look like the real part, but the part itself, clear material with uh, uh, colors inside. Okay, very similar to what you see here, or the perfume bottles, the cosmetic bottles, right? This is the idea. And the reason that we want to print it like this, and the reason it matters, the, the color accuracy and the labeling and the bottle, is to be able to have the discussion. So both of the bottles that you see in the pictures have been 3D printed using RJ8 series technology. And the idea is you hold it in your hand, you're, you, you're able to have a discussion about this with your fellow designer, with your managers, it can be in the same room, it can be in the same building, it can be in different locations uh, around the world. You are hold, holding the exact same part that was all printed overnight and uh, exactly with the same result. You can have multiple design iteration until you get to the exact same part and you can bring it uh, to the customers to make sure that you're moving forward with the right uh, product. Now, there are a few things in our technology that allow you to get to that kind of a finish or to get that kind of product. One of it is obviously the ability to use color material. Another one is our uh, ability to print with our Vero Ultra Clear material. This is a material that uh, mimics PMMA or even glass, right? So it has a very, very high level of translucency. So everything in the cosmetic uh, industry, for example, it's critical to be able to a mimic this to do design verification for the clear parts, right? Especially with the bottles. And the idea is to be able to translate everything that is in the design into the final uh, printed part. So if it's gradient, so you see here gradients of color on the bottle, every uh, a texture and feature that is on the screen needs to be translated into the model part. All of the bottles here have been. Uh, 3D printing. This is about the clear material. Another uh, uh, function that is around color is the uh, is the Pantone. I will start to say that Stratus is the only Pantone validated 3D printer on the market right now, and Pantone is critical, right? It's the most well-known and used color standard. It's very famous in the 2D world, but also in the, the 3Ds. Companies want that their logo, marketing, website, they will all be in the same uh, colors. And companies work with, with dozens to hundreds of colors every year, and it's a huge challenge 
to keep that consistency and alignment, especially when using a, a different technology. And the only way to align stakeholders and internal communication is using a universal language of color. And this is why when you choose a Panton on uh, the Stratasys uh, uh, printer, you know what you're getting. It's not green, it's not yellow, it's no it's yellowish green. You can choose exactly the shade and exactly the hue of the color that you want. And you know that what you see, someone who is 5,000 miles away sees the exact same thing and the exact same result and are able to make that informed decision. And this is very, very uh, critical. We talked about clear, we talked about Panton, and last but not least is the rubber-like material. And this is what brings us to the world of texture. So you're able to print with a, our Agilus material, which is a flexible material, has great memory, allows you to uh, do moving parts. So you can see on the left-hand side, the living hinges part, right? We'll show another example. But when combined with our rigid uh, uh, color material, you can get a range of flexible colors, a flexi a shore levels, and texture. So the armrest that you see, all 3D printed, by the way, the leather-like part with the red stitches in the seams, all was printed in one part using the, uh, the Stratasys J-Series printers. And the idea is to be able to mimic everything about the part. Okay, so you have the color and you have the texture that comes with it. Um, one example of a company that's using the, the flexible materials to do, a, to do functional testing, but not only, this is an example of a thermos, a customer of ours from Korea. So on the right-hand side, you can see the bottle design. So they actually used our, our printers for every part of the design planning. But uh, what I wanted to highlight here is actually them using the, the 3D printer to test the, uh, the cup itself to make sure that it is sealed. They uh, ran pour, uh, pouring performance uh, testing to make sure that nothing spills, that it, it is uh, sealed properly. The hinges themselves snap fit on the, on the caps. They then printed out the entire, uh, the entire part to see uh, how it looks. And on, the left-hand side, you can see the end-use part, okay? Um, we have multiple companies that use our printers to test the, the product, the packaging of it, and the look and feel of the final product. I'll, I wanted to share a couple of examples with you. One is a, a, quad, a quad pack. This is from the cosmetic industry. What you see here is their entire cosmetic product line, and they printed each and every part, including, by the way, the powder inside, the cream inside, okay, to show and have an understanding of the complete product line and how it looks. Using additive manufacturing, uh, help cut their cost by 90% and the same with, uh, with time. Faster go to market, faster decision making uh, process, ability to bring the, these prototypes in front of people uh, uh, much sooner. And they used our uh, product as well, and we'll talk about it in the second part, um, for a kind of low volume testing using uh, 3D printing to, to help create molds to print the part from the uh, end use material. The other example uh, from the kind of the polyjet world or the, the design world is GSK. This is GSK in, uh, in India. And when they, uh, uh, they were working on the Horlix product line, they used our technology for the design bottle and they uh, uh, worked on uh, kind of testing out every single part of the bottle. So what you see here is uh, the cap part. So if you see on the top of the bottle, this is the enlarged part that you see. So uh, testing the, the color, testing the snap fits, testing the, the function of the part. It's the caps, the closure, the lid itself, the labeling, right? Printing the part end to end to make sure that before they go to production, they have a kind of everything figured out and they're coming into the market with the exact design that they intended, okay? So it's, it's a kind of the same story uh, all along. You wanna make sure that you have the right design, the right coloring, the right look and feel, the right texture, that everything fits together and works together. 
So if we're talking about kind of the, the mission of the value proposition of the polyjet technology in the world of design is all about moving faster, starting things earlier uh, in the process, having uh, early iterations very, uh, uh, very early using maybe draft material and moving into color very, very quickly, getting feedback and being able to have internal discussion uh, um, both with our internal people in the company and with uh, customers and make the decision sooner and faster, cutting costs by anywhere between 80 to 90% when you compare it to um, the way that we are doing uh, things now and everything done in-house, okay? So when we're talking about kind of the solution that additive manufacturing has until now, we talked a lot about the, the design and the color and the prototyping and the packaging. I want to move to talk a little bit about the uh, manufacturing solution. And here we'll talk also in, uh, about a few groups. We'll talk about different molding applications, uh, jigs and fixtures, and solution for the manufacturing floor. Here you'll see solution both in polyjet but mainly in FDM, infused deposition modeling using a, a thermoplastic. I will say that what I'm going to show you is ideas. What we usually have is customers buy our printers to do X, and when they start working it, they realize the potential and how this printer can replace either existing processes or existing outsourced uh, parts, even metal parts, with in-house additive manufacturing solution. And as we go through these, uh, these slides and these parts, my ask to you is kind of start thinking, looking at what, how you are doing things today. If there is anything that applies to you, that might be an option to either be replaced or enhanced through an additive manufacturing uh, solution. So the first uh, molding application that I'd like to talk about is around blow molding, and this is taking a polyjet or taking prototyping into the into the next uh, step this is about low volume production this is not replacing traditional manufacturing but if after you've designed uh, uh, the bottle and you know how you want it to look you want it to to see how it looks not with stratasys material but with pt or the real material you can print the mold itself using what you see here on the screen is our digital abs material and why polyjet? Because there is no post-processing required. Because of the surface finish, because of the smooth surface, you can take it out of the printer, mount it on the, uh, on the molding machine, and, uh, and have your bottle, okay? So the idea is to use the, the advantage that the polyjet uh, technology has, which is around uh, smooth surfaces, for example, to help uh, uh, create uh, these bottles in terms of time saving, and you can see it here versus if it's a CNC or aluminum mold, we're talking about three weeks of turnaround to get the mold, assuming there is no issues with the iteration versus one or two days uh, with Polyjet. This is an overnight print because it is a bulky part and from thousands of dollars down to 300 US dollars for materials on this, uh, on this part. An example of a customer that's using us is a Century, which is a customer of ours in Japan. There is a video when I share the presentation, uh, feel free uh, to go have a look. And they actually use our printers kind of threefold. So they print prototypes using our, uh, our printer for conceptual modeling. They print digital mold using the digital ABS. And they even do a, what we call DDM, direct digital manufacturing where they do low volume customized products. So they, may, they make one or two of a kind as an end use part using a, our technology. So this is the example of bold mold, blow molding, sorry, using a polyjet. I wanna turn into other molding application and now we're gonna kind of transition to the world of a, of a FDM. The first example is around a paper pulp molding. A, when we're talking about creating the tool or creating the mold, in this case, it is using a PC polycarbonate. It's about reducing a, a cost, and, cost and time, having as intricate and detailed a design as you want. You're designing in a 3D. You can pretty much design a, 
uh, what you want. In this case, we're utilizing the fact, and you'll see it also in the next one, that FDM is a porous material, so it is uh, uh, extremely, uh, uh, works very, very well for, a, for kind of forming or molding a application. Here we're talking about one or two days to create the mold and can be anywhere between maybe $500 or $1,000 to create the mold itself. Sorry, or to create a, to create the tool. This can of course be a combination of the paper mold with partly parts printed with FDM for the holistic experience with the product. This is one example utilizing FDM and the porosity of the material. The other one is around uh, thermoforming. Okay, the fact that uh, FDM thermoplastic have high heat resisting and because they are porous makes it a, a kind of perfect for therm thermoforming a, a molds and parts. So you see the example here, the mold is on the left hand side. You can see the, the thermoform a part in the middle and how it's used um, on the end use product. So if you are a, a, a marketing person and you want to show their real end use part packaging to your to your boss, this can happen within a few hours and you can bring it uh, uh, to the table. Um, we now have even more advanced uh, materials. So our Altum 1010, which we will show in the next example as well, it is the high strength uh, heat resisting FDM uh, thermoplastic, has the, a, a very high heat resistant and thermal stability. So it is perfect for thermoforming applications, autoclave operations, and everything that needs sterilization, for example. So it's extremely, extremely high heat resistance. So when you're talking about thermoforming, there are multiple materials that can apply depending on the application. Another application that Altum 1010 is great for is everything in the food industry. So uh, Altum 1010 has the NSF 51, which is food safety certification. It is also biocompatible and you has a, a USP class six uh, certifications for those of us uh, who are familiar with it. So for food production, baking sheet, patterns, dye, fixture, customized molds uh, that you will need, everything that has come with food uh, contact, this is the, the perfect material used by uh, packaging companies in the food industry, and I'll show an example uh, very soon. Uh, moving from kind of the molding into the manufacturing floor, I wanted to talk about two main areas where we see uh, 3D printing or additive manufacturing shine. The first is in the world of uh, end of arm tooling or uh, robotics, where we use plastic parts, believe it or not, to replace metal parts. And here it is all about being able to use a light but very, very strong uh, uh, parts. So what you see in the picture on the top, it is a nylon 12 carbon fiber. On the bottom is our, uh, is our uh, ultimate material. So this is replacing a uh, metal parts. And because this is 3D printing additive manufacturing, you can design the parts accordingly. So the parts that you see here have integrated uh, air channels, you can integrate uh, hinges, gripper mechanisms, everything uh, inside the part. The Genesis part that you see here is completely different from the original metal uh, uh, robotic arm because we could design it as we wanted. So this is a much more slick and sophisticated uh, design, yet very strong. What you see here is the with vacuum, it, uh, it holds the metal part while it's being drilled. So you didn't sacrifice anything in terms of um, the effectiveness, the effectiveness, sorry, or the functionality uh, of the parts. But with the weight reduction, you can uh, get a lot more uh, robot speed, which translate into productivity, right? The other kind of manufacturing floor solution, and here I'll show you a few example, examples, sorry, but it's as far as uh, you can take it. This is the world of jigs and fixtures. So this is either replacing the way that we uh, uh, do things today or completely new ways uh, to use additive manufacturing. This is about customized and lightweight uh, jigs and fixtures that you can have available 
within hours or uh, in one day, replacing existing aluminum uh, tooling, which is very expensive, takes a long time, and even heavy if you think about ergonomics. So replacing if a uh, part that used to be metal with plastic parts, and if you think in terms of uh, the workers that are using it, is uh, critical. We have unique materials that are uh, that are designed for this. So on the right hand side, you can see the uh, ABS ESD7 material, which is an electrostatic dissipative material, critical for housing and jigs and fixtures, especially in uh, uh, the electronics uh, electronics world. So we have designated material. I mentioned the nylon 12 carbon fiber with 35% uh, carbon inside, which allows for very, very strong material uh, without uh, sacrifice anything when replacing uh, metal parts. We're talking about certified material. So we mentioned the Altum 1010. We have the Altum 9085 for a uh, certified for aerospace. We have in general transportation certification. We have medical certifications for uh, our materials, both on Polyjet and on uh, uh, and on FDM. And the idea is that using uh, this uh, FDM solution, and as I mentioned in the beginning, that it covers multiple applications, right? And it's up to you how far you take it. It can be uh, brackets, it can be forming tools, it can be drills, drill guides, it can be steel assemblies, it can be greasing tool, it can be used for a composite tooling. It, we talked about a thermoforming, sheet metal, a, a, a tooling, a carbon fiber layup, and as far as you can, uh, as you can uh, take it, this is just a few kind of for instances to uh, show you how other customers are uh, are using 3D printing on the manufacturing floor. All around, it's about doing things faster and cheaper, right? The example, by the way, that you see here is from Packline, a company that uses, this is Altum 1010, uh, in their uh, uh, food packaging uh, uh, products. And as you can see here, it's about doing customized parts where you only need a few of and you don't need to commit to a minimum order or create uh, molds uh, uh, outsource cutting costs and doing things uh, faster you don't have to hold inventory everything is digital right but again think about how fast the turnaround is think about when a part breaks and if you don't have it in inventory replacement part what do you need to do in order to get it I'm not saying that this will solve 100% of your problems, but even if it solves 80%, that's quite an achievement. This is about kind of our technology and how it applies both in the world of design and in manufacturing. I wanted to uh, kind of give you a glimpse of our uh, product line and what are these, uh, what printers we have in, in both in the FDM and the Polyjet. So on the right hand side, this is the famous J series that I've uh, uh, that I've talked about. Um, they, these have the ability to print in full color uh, uh, with uh, uh, multiple materials. Mo most of the part, if not all that you've seen today were printed on our uh, J8 series, okay, from the polyjet side. On the left-hand side, it's our FDM field deposition modeling uh, product starting from our F series going all the way up to our uh, professional uh, uh, Fortis series, okay? And the higher you go, it's a matter of material capability, uh, material capabilities, uh, the size of the product, right? Or the size of the, the sizes of the build tray. So you need to think for yourself, what is my average size? How much am I going to print? How many kind of options or capability do I want the printer uh, uh, to have? And this will help guide your decision. I do want to uh, uh, focus before uh, I open up the conversation on our newest uh, addition to the family, our uh, Stratasys J55. This is a full color printer that is created for uh, offices, for a workplace. It's extremely uh, uh, quiet and the idea is to go from fast concept models using kind of the draft brain material to a full color, quality, high fidelity uh, uh, models to ensure maximum designer uh, output allows you to print in full colors. 
uh, the texture, very intuitive, embedded interface, very, very uh, uh, easy to work with. And for those of you who have not had a chance to, to see it, it has a, a rotating uh, a platform. And the idea is truly to bring a full color solution to the, uh, to the, designer, uh, to the designer's office. Okay. So thank you, everyone. I hope it was uh, uh, informative and uh, that we were able to uh, give you at least an idea of what is, uh, what is possible, what is uh, uh, available from uh, our technology. This is truly a, 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 for instance, or kind of a, to give you an idea of what can be done. I'm sure that as we went along, you kind of had some ideas on how you can make it applicable, uh, make it applicable for you, uh, and and thinking about the ways that we can we can incorporate it into the way that we're doing things now, and even change the way that we're doing this things now, uh, due to the advantages and the capabilities uh, of the technology. Um, I will say that uh, I think one of the best parts, especially around uh, 3D printing, or the best way to experience 3D printing is to uh, experience it, right? And to see it. So um, uh, I will open it up to questions, but I will, uh, John, I hope you don't mind me committing on your behalf that I'm sure you'll be happy to host uh, whoever wants to come and see, for example, the J55, right? And how the, the, the RJ series, the printer story, to see the to see parts printed out of this uh, technology and how they work, and maybe even kind of challenge us and see if uh, the solutions are right for you. I agree, Shiri. Uh, and yes, we're uh, we're looking for the challenges. And uh, with our three D printing demo center at our Melbourne office, with these uh, machines in them, uh, we're able to obviously print demonstration parts depending on the expected outcomes. Um, okay. Um, so I'll try to open it up for some. Uh... Just while you're looking up those questions, Shiri, just to everyone yes. that's uh, on the webinar, um, my contact details are on the screen that you can see now. Uh, alternatively, feel free to reach out to your contact that you may know within TCO Hoffman or TCO Hunt. Um, all, all of our team uh, will field your questions back to myself or others within our team with uh, experience in the 3D printing side of things. So feel free to reach out. And as Shiri said, just uh, reminding everyone, there will be a copy of this webinar email to everyone that registered, whether you attended or not. Uh, and we will also be following you up uh, with communication in the coming days. Uh, to gauge any further questions you may have that don't get answered now uh, or do further investigations. Okay, so I'll share some of the questions. By the way, feel free to add, to uh, write them either in the chat or in the question bar so we can uh, uh, we can help uh, get back to you. Um, I see a question around uh, 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 color and uh, getting the exact uh, uh, kind of color texture. Uh, Marco, can I hand it over to you? Can you maybe share a little bit about how we do the color matching and the color texture and maybe in a more higher level, translating a, a translating color into the printed part? Okay, uh, so essentially uh, the color printing methodology is uh, Maybe in a simple words, it's like a, a 2D printing. So you can um, imagine we in a 2D printing field, we will mix a uh, different color like CMYK and different ratios to uh, formulate a color in our paper. So uh, in 3D printing, it's, it's, uh, it's somehow similar. So when we have um, uh, different uh, kind of resins like uh, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So we can use different ratios of the resins to mix um, 
mix the color. So uh, by different combinations and different mixing ratio, actually, essentially, we can print more than 50, 100,000 of color. So um, in our software, uh, it's very easy because uh, if uh, the computer read the RGB values uh, in our software or in our slicing software, uh, it will convert to the CMYK mixing ratio. So essentially, uh, you don't need to do the color conversion job by yourself. Just uh, maybe in your computer, you have the rendering software that the color is appeared on the 3D objects. Our software can recognize the RGB values of every pixels and will convert it for you into a CMYK uh, mixing uh, combinations and go with the printer, it will do the math. So essentially the texturing from your computer in your screen into the printed job is totally um, automatic throughout the slicing software, uh, which is our GraphCap Print platform. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Marco. I can share for myself, and uh, again, John, if you have the uh, the option to uh, show some of the attendees uh, some of the part, it is truly a remarkable the ability to. I, I said it during the presentation to translate uh, every part into a a three D printed part and uh, exact translation. I think it truly is uh, uh, quite remarkable. Um, the next question is about choose, kind of choosing the right material uh, specifically in FDM. So we show uh, we showed Marco, we show example from the uh, jigs and fixtures. So I talked about ABS ESD7 and nylon and, and uh, nylon 12 carbon fiber, Altum 1010, um, right? We have ABS, we have polycarbonate for, a, a, for thermoforming. And the question is specific, I'll make it a, a broader one. How do we choose the right material? Uh, for the relevant uh, manufacturing application. Okay, uh, that's a very good question. So, yes. um, <laughs> actually, for, for the jigs and fixture, uh, actually we have multiple industry. So, um, uh, for example, we have ABS ESD7, we have Autumn 1010, we have also a new material called Durand, also um, many kinds of material. Um, for example, say for example, uh, for the ABS ESD7, it is uh, mainly used in some uh, electrical um, appliances, components, which um, uh, may be built up of some charges. It's, uh, it's very dangerous for some uh, electronic components. So uh, the uh, ESD7 is called a electrostatic dissipative material so every charge on the surface of the jig uh, it will be earth uh, so the charge the electrical charge will be earth so it will not damage the electrical component so yes. maybe for for some factories making the components of the phone earphones or electrical components we will need this kind of jigs and fixture so we have another kinds of uh jigs and fixture called a Duran. a uh, we are not showing here, but um, it is a nylon-based material, so it is a very um, very smooth material and anti-resistant. So uh, it will not scratch on the park when you want to do it as a jig to to grip a park from one place to another. And we have another material called nylon 12 CF, which is a very strong material. So maybe uh, it can be a jig or a fixture or even a end use park because uh, the uh, mechanical property strength is the highest amounts uh, of the FDM materials right now and is also lightweight and intended to replace uh, or not replace or, or to 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 simulate the property of some metal with a very lightweight material. Um, also, we have uh, a Autumn 1010. Autumn 1010 is um, more useful in some food industry, which needs some um, maybe ISO standard uh, that uh, maybe some uh, um, we, we have to contact with some food or some uh, medical uh, uh, materials. So at that 
a position, we may need to have a autumn 1010 because uh, the material itself, we have some kinds of uh, uh, license and, and some kind of testing that is passed. Thank you, Mark. So John, maybe maybe over to you and uh, maybe just to share kind of your experience. So, because we get this question asked a lot, right? When customers come to us and ask, what is the best materials? Some of, some of the time our recommendation is just to print with, you know, we, we offer maybe a few options to kind of for them to take in, and test, right? Yeah, that's correct. So um, my experience tells me that uh, a lot of the time it is investigating uh, any of the unique properties as Marco identified. Is there static dissipative properties required for electronics? Is there uh, a metal replacement, nylon 12 CF? Uh, is there required for certain certifications? Uh, biocompatibility, food grade certifications, uh, chemical resistance. Uh, a lot of those questions get raised, uh, but what it enables us to do uh, through the extensive library of information and material data sheets that are available uh, and we can make available to everyone, uh, we can match those material properties with the expected outcomes. Um, and again, uh, with the Stratasys machines we have in our Melbourne facility, once we've identified and we can match those properties, uh, we then invite the idea of benchmarking a, a particular material from a particular technology and machine. Uh, so you, the customer, can actually experience and test uh, what the outcomes are going to be and if they match your expectations. So I do invite the idea of being able to do that for everyone. Perfect. Thank you very much, John. Um, on this very high note, uh, I think we will end for today. So thank you everybody again for uh, uh, joining. As I mentioned, we will uh, we will share this uh, uh, presentation with uh, with everyone. I urge you to either go uh, visit our website, of course, contact uh, John for any additional uh, information. We have John. You mentioned the data sheets. We have an abundance of uh, case studies and. Uh, companies from around the world kind of using our machines and, and how they've used our printers because you know I said in the beginning usually you you think it can do X and you discover that it can do a lot more so maybe kind of seeing how other people's are you other people are using it other companies are utilizing the 3d printers is always a, a, a great experience and we hope to uh, hear from uh, all of you very soon thank you Marco thank you John Thank you everybody for joining. Have a great day. Thank you.